Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for such a warm welcome. Can you remember back to when you were a teenager and trying to remember what to do as a, and choose as a career? I can. I was at a girls' school in Dublin, and in my mid-teens, I became seriously interested in religion. And I considered a career in the church. I discussed the idea with my parents, and I can vividly remember my father telling me very seriously that it would be unwise to choose a career where you can't have the top job. At that point, women weren't even allowed to be bishops, and the first female Archbishop of Canterbury is probably still a way off now. With that advice in mind, I went off to consider other career options. I toyed then for a number of years with the idea of becoming a historian. The Irish academic system allows you to study a wide range of subjects for your entire school career. And it was only in the last six months that I seriously thought about becoming an engineer, realizing that it would allow me to balance the science and the creative. I spent eight delightful years in Trinity College in Dublin, but by the end, I was keen to put theory into practice and really design something. I joined Bureau Happold in Bath as a structural graduate, inspired by their recent work on the Millennium Dome and the great courts of the British Museum. Their passion for integrated, sustainable engineering, which enhances the experience of the building's users, was critical to my decision. I haven't looked back since, and my own design journey includes complex laboratory buildings, hospitals, a bus station, stadia, and the Pitt and Paddock building at Silverstone. Eleanor Roosevelt said, do one thing every day that scares you. I certainly did that after 11 years in the office when I relocated my fa myself and my family from peaceful Bath to developing Qatar in the spring of 2012 to lead the site-based works on the project I had just spent two years designing. Bureau Happel were responsible for the design of 25 buildings over a five-story basement, which formed phases two and three of the Musharraf downtown Doha project in the Qatari capital. The project aims to regenerate much of the city centre in a sustainable way for the 21st century. Excavation and piling were underway as I arrived. After 11 years in the office, I had matured as a design engineer, but leading Middle East site-based work would be an exciting new challenge, and not just from the technical perspective. The construction managers were outwardly accepting, but clearly, despite having female colleagues, senior women were not usual. After an overly polite start, their concerns began to fade as they realized that Dr. Sarah was able to deal capably with contractors, technical matters, and shifting site politics with a cheerful attitude they were rarely able to mimic. Office meetings with a female to ma male to female ratio of 20 to one became the norm. And increasingly their concerns dwindled as I realized I could become a significant contributor to the project, politely making my opinions known without resorting to shouting or thumping the table. It wasn't, however, as if they didn't shout at me. And I remember after one particularly tempestuous meeting with the client team, one senior manager apologized profusely as he sheepishly said that he had never shouted at a woman before. I smiled, inwardly chuckling that he had seen me as an engineer first and a woman second, and graciously accepted his apology. Things were equally challenging out on the construction site. The site staff always addressed me as sir as the default for someone in charge. The contractors team whose work I understood clearly understood that I was as conscientious as any other consultant. I was the experienced person that my colleagues referred to when contentious issues arose and was quick to act to help resolve a problem. It did lead to some funny moments. I still remember the look on the senior construction manager's face when I suggested climbing down into a reinforcement cage in a deep base to look at a problem that they were having. They hadn't done so, but their staff and my colleagues had, and I wanted to support my staff and see for myself the issues that the contractor was brushing aside. I don't know whether they were more worried about losing face by not accompanying me or by actually having to inspect the work themselves. Anyhow, we quickly got the issue resolved when we were down there to look at it together. 
My own more international expatriates were equally confused as a, uh, as a site team about having a female boss. Indeed, on the first occasion we were on site together in the evening, resolving a problem with concrete supply, they questioned whether I needed to go home to cook my husband's dinner. I reassured them that my husband was a far better cook than I and would have long since prepared the family dinner and that having to work late is really part of the normal family dynamic. Some of the best moments came when towards the end of my three years there, I was told by several male colleagues that having met me and seen what I did on site and in the office, that it had inspired them to think differently about their wives and their daughters and what they might achieve. That was what I was most proud of for my time there. In Qatar, <laughs> I started as an engineer who really understood multidisciplinary engineering and finished as one who was able to lead the integration of many aspects of building services installation with each other and with the structure. My sharp and incomparably exciting learning curve was accelerated by the local culture. They expected senior leaders to talk knowledgeably and resolve concerns relating to any aspect of the building's engineering systems. Successive challenges arrived quickly throughout my time there, but I was amply compensated by the delight of creating an iconic group of buildings. Rewards such as these make my very satisfying working life into something unique and inspirational. Bureau Happel provided me with a unique opportunity to step out of my comfort zone and develop my skills on an amazing project in Qatar. Everybody should be equally encouraged and supported to seek and explore new challenges with the hope that the experience gained will provide them with fresh insights and ways of tackling problems that they never might have considered if they hadn't done something that scared them. The end of my time in Qatar and, the re and my return to the UK coincided with my promotion to director and the realization that it was time for me to stand up and be counted, to ensure that I spoke honestly and supportively about the things I believe in and to help support others in their careers. It was a step change in my psyche and this has become a key tenet of my leadership ever since. I, like many of my colleagues, spent much of my early career trying not to draw attention to my gender and looking to be recognized as an excellent engineer rather than a female engineer. However, as I've become increasingly senior, I know that it's important to speak openly about my work as an engineer and the joy, excitement and respect I've had as a woman in the profession. Hopefully it will encourage others following me to understand that challenges can be overcome with persistence. STEM role models are vital to inspire teenagers of both sexes to consider these subjects when fewer than one in five 13 to 15 year olds can name two famous scientists, engineers or mathematicians. Consulting engineering is for everyone. Indeed, the collaborative nature often displayed by women can be of benefit to teams as they look to problem solve and create optimum design solutions. Inclusivity and diversity needs to go well beyond gender. If, as engineering consultants, we're going to aim high, we need to have teams comprised of people with diverse thoughts, experiences and ideas, and all of them need to feel that they can make an equal contribution to success. Thus, I've recently become a willing LGBT ally, and I'm leading initiatives to break down the stigma of mental health within our profession. The concept, thank you, the concept of, the concept of standing up and being counted brings me nicely on to the importance of this evening's awards and what they mean. So many awards can focus on subjective likes and dislikes of judging panels. The joy and the inherent success of the SIPSI Building Performance Awards is that they consider the measurement of quantifiable performance. It's less about whether we like it and more about the proven benefits that it's been shown to make to the building's occupants. Great building performance doesn't happen by accident. It evolves through a collaborative design process where client, architect, 
and a united engineering team establish a clear vision and then constantly refer back to it to check that it is being realized throughout the process. It involves bringing a contractor on board through an intelligent procurement process who can help bring that vision to life. It includes a dedication in commissioning buildings properly and painstakingly. And having just seen the years that that's taken on the Louvre Abu Dhabi, the importance of this stage cannot be underestimated. It needs to collect data from thousands of sensors in the building and to intelligently analyze them, extracting key insights from the huge data set. This needs to be done on many more buildings than just the jewels and the crown so that our learning is enriched and we can use the insights gained, good and bad, in a virtuous feedback loop on future, on future buildings. Post-occupancy evaluation on the opinions of the building's users also needs to be incorporated with the analysis data to inform it with the impact on human sentiment. Our companies are at different points on the journey into analytics around performance, but SIPSI's dedication to bringing businesses and leaders together to share journeys of their stories, stories of their journeys and what they have learned is invaluable. The recent accelerated development in connected and autonomous vehicles in the UK has been driven by companies coming together and sharing experience to realize a goal more quickly. Our engineering institutions can help us do this and combine our learning to develop sustainable, efficient, delightful buildings for the 21st century. Great design is important, but the follow-up in gathering data around performance can turn good design intentions into exceptional asset performance. Thank you very much.